Hey everyone, this is Angela from Bake It With Love and today we're making a classic fondant, the normal fondant, not the marshmallow version. Um, if you haven't made it before, it's nothing to be intimidated about. It's actually really easy and it tastes so much better than store bought. And we're going to start out with a quarter cup of cold water and a tablespoon of unflavored gelatine, which you can find in your baking aisle by the Jello products. And while that's blooming, you're going to give that five minutes. Uh, we're going to start sifting our two pounds of confectioner or powdered sugar, any which way you want to sift it. Now I'm sifting my powdered sugar into the large bowl that I'm going to be using to make my fondant and you'll want to do the same sort of thing uh, because once the gelatine has bloomed and we've mixed it with the other wet ingredients, the glycerin and the light corn syrup or glucose, uh, we'll add some flavoring to that if you want or colors if you already know what color you want your fondant to be and then we'll add it directly into a well in the center of the sifted powdered sugar here. Now we're using the gelatine, the cold water, the vanilla extract, uh, light corn syrup or glucose, as well as glycerin, confectioner sugar, and some vegetable shortening. Now the only one of these that I can't find at my grocery store is the glycerin. I have to order that from Amazon, so I will put that link down below in the details. Um, everything else I can usually find at the grocery store. Most of your Walmarts will have a section for parties and weddings uh, by the gift cards, and that has your store-bought fondant, and if you're lucky, it has glycerin, but not me. So this is my glycerin after blooming, and then I microwaved it for about 10 seconds to loosen it back up, give it a stir, and then I'm gonna whisk in my tablespoon of glycerin and a half a cup of light corn syrup, as well as a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I am gonna whisk that for quite a while. I want it really well incorporated, plus it gives it time to cool down before I add it to my confectioner sugar. So don't skip that step, make sure you cool it down and get them really well mixed. And you know, I did this much longer than I'm showing here, but I'm trying not to bore you too much because this isn't anything fancy. Um, it's not hard to make, I gotta say that again. And you'll see on the end when I'm working it in with my hands before I go to kneading it on my fondant mat, pastry mat, that there's nothing fancy about it. You just wanna incorporate all this powdered sugar into your wet ingredients really well. And it takes a bit of elbow grease and when you run out of that, I go to working with my hands more. You'll see, just a second. Now I actually sifted two full pounds of the confectioner's sugar and then I took about a quarter of it out uh, so that if I need more, I have it. You may or may not need all of your confectioner's sugar. You're looking for the right consistency that you can roll out without it sticking to your fondant roller. And if you don't have a fondant roller, yeah, go ahead, use your rolling pin. Something nice and flat. So. Here's all my wet ingredients into the center of that well, and I'm gonna use my wooden spoon and incorporate that until I can no longer stir it because it does really bind up pretty fast. When it starts to come together, it's not easy to stir and you, you, you won't be making much headway with getting the powdered sugar into, the, into it. And at that point, like I said, nothing fancy. I'm gonna get my hands in there and I'm gonna use my half a teaspoon of vegetable shortening or Crisco. And I'll put that on my fingertips so that it doesn't stick too badly, hopefully, in theory. <laughs> That's not the case always. Uh, but you're also trying to incorporate that vegetable shortening into your fondant. So that's part of why we do it as well. It's not gonna be too much longer. I won't be able to get too far. I'll kind of have the beginnings of my fondant ball started and uh, you'll see that I'll go to working it with my hands. Now some of the powdered sugar, confectioner sugar that I held out, I'm gonna use that to put about a half a cup or so on my working surface and also work that into the fondant. Like I said before, you're really looking for the right texture. If you've worked with fondant before, you kind of know what you're looking for. Uh, it should be smooth, really pliable, really easy to roll out, uh, but not too sticky. I like mine a little bit sticky and that's just my preference um, so that when I work with it, I add cornstarch and it's smooth as can be. Plus when I wrap it in my plastic wrap, I don't need to add oil to keep my, my surface nice and smooth or from drying out. So here we have the vegetable shortening that I'm gonna work into my fondant. Uh, as always, when you are done making your fondant, keep it rolled in plastic wrap when you're working with it, all those little extra pieces that you have ready to go or something, keep them covered. When you're storing your fondant, it stores for about two weeks, uh, wrapped tightly with plastic wrap. So. Like I said, nothing fancy. I'm just placing my powdered sugar, confectioner sugar, wherever I feel a sticky surface on the fondant, and I'm just kind of kneading it in the bowl before I transfer it out to my working surface. So I've worked as much of my powdered sugar into my fondant as possible. Um, I'm ready to turn it out 
I have pretty much everything that you saw in the bowl is in my fondant now and I'm still using up my half a teaspoon of the vegetable shortening and I'm going to continue to work that into the fondant here as I need it on my working surface. That is some more of the powdered sugar that you see. See, there wasn't much left in the bowl. I put whatever was left on the top. I have some down that I'm using to work in that's on my working surface and I'll continue to do that as needed if my fondant is still too sticky and you'll see that because I will add some powdered sugar here on top shortly. Now if you end up adding too much powdered sugar and your fondant's too dry, you can add um, just a few drops of water on your working surface and then knead it in to loosen it back up just a little bit. Uh, but if you're very careful on the front end with adding the powdered sugar, you'll get the right consistency and you shouldn't overshoot that. It's kind of hard to because once your fondant is to the point, see mine's still kind of sticky. If you look closely at the surface, you can see that it's kind of wet. So I'm going to add a little bit more, that's about a quarter cup of powdered sugar on the top and work that in. If you do it in small increments like that, you'll be okay. You, you know, you shouldn't overshoot it too badly, I promise. <laughs> so I'm just going to finish working this in. This fondant is going to be ready to roll out and use for whatever purposes you had in mind. Uh, rolling it over a cake, using it for shapes, it's ready to go right now. And like I said, wrap it up tightly, store it for up to two weeks. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for more good stuff. I have a lot coming. As always, we are so glad to have you here with us. Thanks for being here and we will see you again next time.